boy, howdy, boys. Wouldn't you know it? It's Wolf Den Podcast time. How are you? I am good. Thanks for being here. I love you. Mwah, mwah, kisses. What's up there, Will? What? Nothing. What you got? Looks like you got some stuff. I mean, I, the... I don't know if you know this, Robert, because you're you're not really a nerd. You're just doing this to get money and chicks. Sure. But the Spider-Man uh, No Way Home uh, trailer is dropping at 8.30 tonight. During the Why? Of <laughs> I don't know. So I got to get ready. I'm all ready. I have my daughter's Spider-Man toy. Uh, oh. Ripped it out of her grubby little mitts. I got uh, Homecoming on Blu-ray. I got Miles Morales on PS4 because Alex still has my regular Spider-Man PS4. I've got the Alex. Gwen Stacy. <laughs> I've got uh, this random volume of Spider-Man. I've got Daredevil because Daredevil's going to be in this movie, Bob. I don't know if you know this. Daredevil's totally going to be in the movie. I saw it on Ain't It Cool News. Uh, <laughs> I got Spider-Man under my hat, literally. Uh, we stole this from Mom what? and Dad's house, by the way. Uh, I am also sitting on a player's guide for Tony Hawk 2 because Spider-Man was in that game. And that means Tony Hawk is going to be in the movie. Confirmed. You heard it here we, first. We owned that. We did. Do I have any cool Spider-Man uh, things? I don't have any cool Spider-Man things. Oh, man. See, like I, I said, fake nerd. I got a reddish DualShock or DualSense controller. It's got dust all over it because I never use it. <laughs> hey, uh, you know what? Close enough. Sp uh, Sony is... Sony owns Spider-Man, Lock, Stock, and Barrel. Uh, it was created by Sony and the great Avi Arad. That lie about Stan Lee and Steve, Steve Ditko is just that a lie. Right. Yes. Everything you said is uh, accurate. Everything yes. I said is absolutely true. Yes. I know Spider-Man. Well, how do you know that it's at 8.30? I tweeted about, because yesterday they said they were going to release the trailer today. Right. And I'm sitting there you know, in my home office, just like waiting for it to drop. And it's like, mid -afternoon. Got a home office. like <laughs> <laughs> it's mid afternoon. I would, as I would assume they would have dropped it by now. So I tweeted something about it. And then I should remember the person's name, uh, tweeted at me the schedule for, uh, scroll up. Yeah. That would be Cogmaw. Yes. Thank you. Cogmaw. This is the schedule for when they're going to be releasing the trailer for no way home around the world. Is this official? Because the font don't look it. <laughs> I think it is. Because I'm seeing now all over Twitter, people are like lining up to see the trailer. Interesting. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, I hope we'll find out if there's uh, any uh, yes. any wild cards in there. I mean, for the for the uh, for the poster. We saw that whatchamacallit, the, the great villain Willem Dafoe is in it. Yes. <laughs> so good that they copied and pasted his picture and put it on the other poster they released for it last mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. So so I'm assuming we'll see more characters revealed as as the trailers come on. When is the movie well, yeah, coming just, out? Uh, December. Oh my God, it's so soon. Yeah. That is one so, month away. Yeah. So is it hopefully... Christmas? Uh, it's not Christmas exactly. I should mm -hmm. look that up. Interesting. Anyway, uh, I guess I guess at eight thirty ish, we'll <laughs> at know 30, something everybody happens. Everybody stop! Uh, everybody stop watching us and go watch Spider Man trailer. Yes. <laughs> uh, December seventeenth of this year. I also wanted to mention at the top today that uh. It maybe maybe you watch us on YouTube. Maybe you're a podcast listener. Maybe you're afraid of Twitch for some reason. Well, guys, you can get it on your Switch now. You can watch Twitch directly yes. from your game console of choice. Yes. So that's right. Uh, they have released the Twitch app for the Nintendo Switch, so you cannot escape us. No, uh, I haven't used it yet. I haven't tried it. Yeah, uh, me neither. I downloaded it. I'd be curious to know if anybody here is watching from their Nintendo Switch. <laughs> I am downloading it right now. It's weird because, you know, these are all like Twitch and YouTube and Hulu and all the other video streaming apps like your Netflixes, your Amazon Primes and whatnot. Those should have all been 
apps that were released close to launch mm-hmm. of the Switch. But like we're what four years out now into its life cycle. The fact that we only have like three or four video streaming services on the thing shows that it is not a priority for anybody. No, <laughs> and it's... I, I, I don't know. So like that's the thing. I don't know if it's not a priority or if Nintendo is such a pain in the ass to work with that they're trying and it's just not working. Well, I mean, the Wii U had. Like mm-hmm. all the all the big ones, the Wii U actually had Netflix and Hulu and YouTube and Amazon the, Prime. The, the Wii, I think, is a big reason Netflix is as big as it is. Yeah, I don't think Netflix would be as successful as it was without the Wii because it was a killer app for the Wii. Yeah, you just needed to put a friggin' disc in. Um, Apparently, I learned that disc was literally just a a code that authenticated uh, the app itself. You can actually hack the app to not need the disc. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I just I just think that uh something with Nintendo is making it difficult for all of these uh video streaming services to like yeah. to like get on their eShop for some reason. Um but the Twitch finally made it through. Yes. Uh not much is a priority to Twitch. <laughs> no. Twitch, uh, Twitch don't care about much. Nope, nope, nope. Anyway, uh, I'd also like to give a special thanks to Fred for the thirty months. Thanks, bro. Oh, thanks, Fred. And go fish goldfish for the two months. Hey, Bob and Will, thanks for the dread recommendation. Played through it last weekend. One of my favorite games of the year. Wow, you are welcome. Speaking Glad you enjoyed it. Of game of the year. Yes. Today, our, our our good friend, Lord and Savior Jeff Keeley, yes, hell. announced the <laughs> announced all the nominees for this year's The Game Awards. Mm, yes, uh, that was I did was not expecting that. Uh, is there no. a better website than IGN? Don't they have it on their own website? So I tried getting it on their own website, but it kept crashing. It kept crashing. Okay. Yeah. At least they kept crashing for me. I don't know if they've like fixed it or whatnot. Let's because remember, see. you can vote on the game awards. Oh boys, it's time. Oh. You all know what to vote for. Yep. Ratchet and Clank. Cyber Shadow. Uh subscribe to the Game Awards website. No, get away from me. If you just go to nominees. Nominees. Yeah. Nominees. Yeah. View all categories. Oh my God! Why? <laughs> if I hit vote, oh no! I, oh, okay, I hate this website. I hate it. Jeff, Jeff, figure it out. If I just start voting, will that work? I think so. Oh, it does one pay. Oh my God! It's so we'll do it one category at a time. Yeah, we're gonna go one category at a time. Should I vote on screen? Is that like not cool to let people know what I'm voting for? I don't. I don't see why anyone would have a problem with it. It's <laughs> like it's just when you go into a voting booth, they like lock the doors yeah. behind you. You know. True. I, I guess there's. I don't know. I don't know. You got like, you know. Voting for the president and then the game <laughs> awards over here, you know. It's... I just, I, well, I don't know if you know this about me, but yeah, I am um... an influencer. <laughs> so if I cl- if I vote for one of these, it mm-hmm. might have it. I might have an effect. I might skew the polls. You might. Here. You might, as they say. Oh no! Influence somebody. Oh god, I hate it. <laughs> uh, anyway, game of the year. We have Deathloop. It, it starts with Game of the Year. I don't know. That's usually the last thing. Because yeah. that's the one everybody wants. We got Deathloop. We got It Takes Two. We got Metroid Dread. We got Psychonauts 2. We got Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. And we got Resident Evil Village. So that's six games. Yes. Of these games, I have played two of them. I have played one of them. Wow. I've played one of them, and I've recommended another one that I haven't played yet. Which one would that have been? My my boss at my 9 to 5 has a PS5, and he said, he, I'm looking for games. So I told him Deathloop is apparently mm-hmm. excellent. And he like he immediately downloaded it right for work. 
I was not too thrilled with Deathloop. Really? Yeah, I I I mean, it's a good game. Uh yeah. but the it, it's like a little bit of a roguelike and yeah. there's a certain path you kind of have to take and the game doesn't really like it it does a really bad job of pushing you in the direction, I think. Right. There's a lot of reading and I don't do that. And there's a lot of backtracking. Right. You know, well, yeah, because you have to basically replay the same day yeah. over and over it's, again. It's Groundhog's Day. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't too... Ja- I mean, the gameplay was really good. Um, yeah. But then I was streaming it, and I was getting stream sniped. You know how you can like uh, join somebody else's game and, yeah. uh, and, and basically chase after them and kill them? I was being stream sniped while I was streaming the game. <laughs> so like that's kind of like uh something that, you know, is unique to me. Uh yeah. But I guess you could just go on Twitch, watch people who are playing Deathloop and just scroll like to the bottom of the Try to the, find them, yeah. Yeah, and try to find them. Um So yeah, I wasn't I, I mean the gameplay was was fun and, and whatever, but uh I don't see myself uh wanting to finish a game like that. So Yeah. I wasn't too thrilled on Deathloop. It is it's good, but I I don't it's definitely not my game of the of the year for right. sure. I heard really good things about Ratchet and Clank. I forgot that came out this year. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um that looks really good and it looks up my alley yeah. and it looks beautiful. Uh it looks like yeah. a great little tech demo for the PlayStation 5, especially something that's not rated up. Um Yeah. So that is something I would like to try. Uh, do they have a demo? I would love to play just a demo of it. Do games even have demos anymore? Yeah. I know Metroid has one. Metroid has one. You could just play but, the demo, and it's pretty yeah. beefy. Uh, Psychonauts 2. Very uh, uh, highly anticipated by... Yes. Uh, I guess uh, it had a cult following. The first one, it had, um, a, it had a very big cult following. It was it was critically adored, but mm. nobody bought it at the time. Right, and it didn't sell very it, well. Yeah, uh, it, its legend grew over the years, though, and they finally were able to release a sequel to it. Uh, uh, I, I just don't know if it's enough to warrant Game of the Year. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've that's another one I've heard really good things about. Uh, yeah. It reminds me of a type of platformer you would see on like a GameCube or something. Well, yeah, um, it came out in that era. Yeah, so it's it interests me, but uh, I yeah, yeah uh, I, I there's a lot of other games I would I would make a priority over. Yeah, I just over, don't uh, know if it's, if it's doing or saying anything that the original game didn't already do. Right. Just now, it's doing it. You know, twenty years later with a bigger audience. I mean, it should say something that uh, it got really it got such good reviews, uh, even though it's an old game with an old formula, <laughs> because yeah. uh, a lot of the times these games, uh, they don't translate too well to the modern era. So right. uh, they, I, I, I guess they did a good job. But again, I haven't played it. Uh, Resident Evil Village. I heard uh, awesome things about as well. Yes. Uh, I have not played Village yet, although I really, really want to. Uh, I have played Resident Evil 7, and I can tell you that this game looks very different from it. Because 7 was very slow, very methodical, and you didn't really fight a lot of uh, creatures in 7. Mm. This game looks like you fight all the creatures. Um, So I don't really know what direction they're trying to take Resident Evil in anymore. That's not to say the game is bad. It's just it seems like it's being bizarre again. You so know, like it's it's falling back into Resident Evil bullshit. Is what well, I'm that's talking. what I want. I want more Resident Evil bullshit. Like Resident Evil Seven. Well, part of why I didn't really play it was because of how different it was. I mean, I heard it was really good and I wanted to play yeah. it, but um, I wasn't immediately drawn to it. Well, I've, what I, I played mean, everything you know, up until or most of the games up until uh, uh, five. And then six, what, I heard I it was trash, by... so I didn't play it. And then seven, yeah. I wanted to play, uh, but I never did. And eight looks like they put a lot more action back into it, and I kind of want that. Yeah. They, well, they're saying like eight is basically the love child of seven and four. 
Mm. And you can see a lot of like four aesthetic. That sounds awesome. In, like the world. I know it does. Uh, what I mean by like Resident Evil bullshit is all the bad Resident Evil games, at least to me, pile on like all the unnecessarily superfluous crap uh, and push that to the forefront of the games rather than just making it a survival horror game. So mm-hmm. like Resident Evil 1 and 2 are f- good because they're survival horror games and you got you know games like 3 and Code Veronica which just pile on you know all umbrella conspiracy crap. Resident Evil 4 was the reset button and then 5 and 6 brought back all the umbrella conspiracy crap and Wesker and all this other nonsense. And then 7, again, reset button made it even simpler than that. You're just alone in Louisiana running away from rednecks. Mm -hmm. So it looks like they're adding more of the bullshit back. I want that bullshit. what, What interests me more than this, though, is Resident Evil 4 VR. Yes. I want to try that. Yes. That looks yeah, really get good. that, and then let me know so I can steal your Oculus. <laughs> you can absolutely try it on the Oculus. Yeah. Um, Bring it to Thanksgiving. Sure. So, yeah, that that looks... Uh, I want to try that. I heard our friend Tim, who speedruns Resident Evil 7, said that that yeah. is the definitive way to play Resident Evil 4. Tim, I love you, but what, <laughs> what are you saying? Well, he originally said the Wii was, so I know you have right. strong feelings about that also. <laughs> so I uh I really really want to play It Takes 2. I think that is, I think I'm actually going to play that. Yeah. Uh that is made by the same people who made uh that other game. Uh A Way Out. A Way Out. Yes. Well, a Way yes. Out I actually played with AJ. Uh and that was incredible. It it was uh one of the best multiplayer experiences I've had in in a in a in, in a game. It it's mm-hmm. it takes two is is a basically a split screen co op game with a with a with a story the whole way through, um, and you don't really see that anymore in in, in yeah. games. It, you basically have to play it with somebody else, mm-hmm. um, and the way it the way uh uh oh, the way a way out worked was only one of you needed the game, and uh you can just connect with somebody else and just start playing or, or one of you could be on Xbox, one of you could be on PC, yeah. whatever. Uh, so this I'd imagine is, is, is similar. Um, yeah. so yeah, this is something that I'd like to try. How long, how long is it? Uh, I'd imagine it's not that long. The, the weird thing is that this takes a, com- this is like in a completely different, uh, uh, this looks completely different than a way out. Cause a way out was like, right. a, like a, like a crime like story like a violent yeah. crime story and and this is like a like a like a pixar movie yeah uh it takes two is 12 hours okay that's not bad 13 and a half if you do some extra stuff yeah so th- this i can see being game of the year uh or at least nominated because it does things different yeah uh it uh yeah, not not a lot of games are doing this right now. Or I don't remember a game that that is just a co op split screen experience. Right. That also lets you play online. Uh. So that I I think it think that makes sense to be here. Otherwise, yeah. Metroid Dread. We talked about it all podcast yes. uh, last week. Uh, it's fucking phenomenal. Uh, I'm gonna absolutely, go for that. <laughs> absolutely. I think the only two real contenders in this con- in this category right now are Deathloop and Dread with maybe Resident Evil 4 as like the dark horse third place. But Eight, Resident having Evil. said yeah, that's what I meant. Um but having said that, I mean you got to go for Dread. Mm-hmm. Uh GCXC Luke says honestly this is a super weak year. I'm going to say I kind of agree like none of these are really like 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 big deals. industry shattering yeah 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 i know i know a lot of hoopla was made about death loop when it came out yeah um but that's kind of like died down mm-hmm. a little bit i think because i mean once you figure out the loop there's not much left to the game i guess um, uh i'm not a putz says there has been so many good games this year there has 
I don't want to yeah. make it sound like we're like uh, saying there's nothing good. It's just that yeah. other years, there's like one game where you're like, oh, that's the one. Like yeah. there's a game that's like everybody was talking about the whole year. Um, mm -hmm. There's a game that like changed parts of the industry, you know, and, and, this, and yeah. this year just doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. I think Metroid Dread is like the... It's one again, of the closest. Yeah. Yeah. That and Death Loop. It takes two does a really good job of doing something unique, but it's not gonna nobody is going to like it's not changing the industry. Nobody is going to follow yeah. follow that. Because a way out did the same thing and nobody nobody seemed to really care. Yeah. Uh there's other categories though. Oh look aside at that. from game of the year. Well, how about this? Is there any other games we would put in the game of the we would nominate for game of the year? Well, you just had on game direction one of the one of the options was Returnal, right? And I'm surprised that didn't make game of the year because that was like a that was like a big deal when it came out. So all these it other was, games that were nominated for game direction are nominated for game of the year. The only ones that right. didn't make it for game direction are uh, Metroid Dread, Resident Evil, and Metroid. Yeah. Why? That's weird. I don't know. Like you would think, like the game of the year would have good game direction. Is it because they're Japanese? I don't know. That's game weird. direction awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovative game direction and design. Very weird. So, yeah. so, so yeah, Returnal could have been game of the year. Yeah. Returnal, I would think a lot of people would have voted for Returnal because it is pretty unique. Um, and it's a really good game as much as I shit on it. Um, yeah, but game direction, like they made the conscious decision not to let you uh, uh, turn the system off. <laughs> yeah, that was a decision that somebody at the company made was like they don't get to save ever. Yeah, even if they haven't died yet. And then and then everybody who is going like oh that's not a roguelike then that makes the game too easy just turning off the system these people were leaving their systems on for a fucking week yeah. and then months later all of a sudden they release an update and you could save your game now <laughs> so so and again it's not yeah. like i want you to be able to save your game like really i just wanted you to be able to pause it and pick it back up later without having yeah. to leave the fucking console on. I don't care if you die, it starts the whole game over again. I get that that's the difficulty you want, but if I'm still alive and I want to go eat food or take a dump, yeah. I want to turn the system off. You should be off. able to do that, yeah. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I think that that's stupid. Otherwise, it's a really uh, fun game. It has really good uh, game design, but uh, yeah. it's got some stupid decisions in it. Um. Yeah, I don't see why Metroid Dread w wouldn't also, and, and Resident Evil Eight. I don't see why games yeah. like that wouldn't make it for game direction. Is it because like we? Is it because like Nintendo hides who the game director is? No, because it's still in the credits. That's true. Metroid Dread game director. And like you know, Resident Evil Village, same thing. Jose Luis Marquez Fumi. Yeah. Who freaking developed it? Mercury Steam. Oh. Yeah. Spanish game developer. Yep. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> Nominate <know>. them. <laughs> Very weird. Very weird. Oh, they also did Samus Returns. Interesting. Yeah. I thought this I was like... That's what light years better than Samus Returns. Oh, yeah. I think that, like, Samus Returns basically got them the job mm -hmm. to do Dread. So, I don't... I don't... I kind of want to skip this one. I don't know who to vote for for Game Direction. Yeah. I mean, the only games I played here are Deathloop and Returnal, and I wasn't really too jazzed about either of them. Yeah. I, I don't know. Imagine It Takes Two wins, because that's the guy. That's the guy who yeah, was saying, like, guy. fuck the Oscars. Fuck the Oscars. Um... Probably will just so he you know has something to do. And Psychonauts two was that um Tim Schafer. Yeah, it was Tim Schafer. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think Ratchet and Clank looked like it had good game direction, but yeah. uh, again, I didn't play it, so I don't know. 
So I'm going to just skip this one completely. Right. Uh, best narrative. We have Deathloop. We have It Takes Two. We have Life is Strange, True Colors. We have Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy. And we have Psychonauts 2. I'm hearing great uh, things about Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes, I'm hearing... Well, I'm hearing that it has a lot of narrative in that it's one of those games where the characters do not shut up. <laughs> so Deathloop has a lot of like a, like a back and forth between the two characters. Yeah. And it's like it's like witty banter. But uh, it's not very witty. Like like there's a lot of just like cursing for no reason. Like like yeah. like to make it edgy. Not like not like the good kind of cursing like you get hit in the head and you go ah fuck. It's like yeah. it's the, I think one of the first lines is fuckity fuck fuck fuck. And it's like all right, now you're just you're just trying to <laughs> just yeah. trying to be rated M. Yeah. Um so I wasn't uh, again. I wasn't too jazzed about that. Yeah, uh, I'd imagine it takes two has some uh, some pretty good narrative. Yeah, that's like the uh, whole uh, deal with the game. Yeah, same thing with Life is Strange. That's like one of those. I don't want to say it's like a Telltale style game, but it's like in the same vein. It's a very narrative focused. I haven't heard game. anything about Life is Strange True Colors. I know the original Life is Strange everybody loves for its narrative, yeah. but I haven't heard anything about True Colors, which makes me yeah, think me it might not be that great. <laughs> Uh, so, and Psych Psychonauts 2, I know Tim Schafer games are always praised for their writing and mm -hmm. like their creativity. Even a game like Brutal Legend, which she did, which I did not like all that much, had a really interesting story and really cool characters. So uh, I'm going to skip this because I haven't played much of it. Best art direction, The Artful Escape, uh, Death Loop. Kenna, Bridge of Spirits, Psychonauts 2, and Ratchet and Clank are Rift Apart. I'm realizing I didn't fucking play anything this year, Will. <laughs> so I've seen uh, The Artful Escape, and it does look very pretty and very unique. Um, Ratchet and Clank honestly just looks like another Ratchet and Clank, Clank game. It's pretty. Um, it's pretty. It is. No, it is. But I mean, The Artful Escape is very unique looking. Mm -hmm. So Kenna... That game came out and like I couldn't tell whether or not people liked it. I think it was a little generic, uh, yeah. but I, people were really excited for its release. I know that. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like a Pixar movie. It looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Death Loop. I will say it does have really good art direction. It does yeah. look really nice, and and, and uh, a lot of like the loading scenes, a lot of the UI elements have like this nice like like a. Uh, like comic booky painted style. Yeah. Uh it's I kind of like it a lot. I think the art direction in Death Loop's really good. Uh and then Psychonauts is Psychonauts. It looks the same yeah. as the old Psychonauts. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, I might I might vote Death Loop for this, but I uh, I didn't play the Artful Escape and I, or or I don't know much about the Artful Escape, so I feel Yeah. I feel bad not picking that. Let me look that up real quick. Yeah, it's I think it's like you're a you're a musician on like a journey trying to like make good music. And it looks Ooh, really cool. Pretty. This does look yeah. cool. What else did I play this year? A lot of Call aside of Duty. from aside from Metroid, the, the all the games I played this year were from other years. <laughs> Yeah, I know. That's what I'm thinking. I played a lot of yeah. stuff that has been around for a while. Gotta say, don't don't like this that much. No. <laughs> Not that cool. into it. Not that into it. I'm 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 voting death loop, baby. All right. All right. I, I took a heel turn. Everybody was like, Bob shitting on <laughs> Deathloop too much. Well, here you go. I voted for it. There you go. Best score and music, The Artful Escape. I'd imagine that's probably pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Cyberpunk. So in that game's defense, it does have good music. Okay. It's got a good music. It has a very good soundtrack. Wasn't um, Cyberpunk nominated for something last year? I don't know because like it just missed the cutoff. I think. I thought it was nominated for something, and that was like the whole thing was that it was nominated before it even came out, and then it came out and it sucked. Uh, let me see. 
Anyway, other other nominees for scoring music, we got Death Loop again. Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy and Near Replicant. Uh, I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy does have a really good soundtrack. You don't even need to play the game to know that. You can just look it up. People in chat are saying most anticipated. It was nominated for. I didn't even know that was a thing. Okay. Yeah, this is usually a thing. Um. Near replicant version one, version point one point two two four seven four four eight seven one three nine. That's the name so, of the game. <laughs> that's immediately disqualified because it is a stupid name. Yes. Do not, do not normalize these dumb, uh, Kingdom Hearts style naming conventions. <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm abstaining from voting. All right. Uh, best audio design, Death Loop, Forza Horizon Five. Now I've heard phenomenal things about Forza Horizon Five. Yeah, you know, I've been seeing a lot of people wondering why Forza Horizon Five was not nominated for Game of the Year. I and that's need surprising. To, I need to play that. I might play a little bit of that tonight. <laughs> Fuck it. There you go. Uh, because it's it's Game Pass, right? Yeah. I'm gonna freaking download it. Uh, cause I, you got off roading, dude. I want to, I want to do that. Yeah. I want to try that. I, I actually, so f- I'm not even interested in racing games, but right. for whatever reason, uh, uh, we, I played the hell out of, uh, the Forza that came with our Xbox 360. That was Forza Motorsport. That was like the sim racing game. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. Forza Horizon is more like the open world arcade style racing game. That sounds even better. Yeah. Because normally I like that. Normally I like like the burnout style. Yeah, uh, it's not you, as arcadey as burnout, but still. Yeah, I saw people wanting this to be game of the year. I saw it was getting ten out of tens and stuff. So I I need that's, to. Yeah, that's surprising. I need to try this. Um, and I'm I, Forza has always had good audio design because they like get the yeah. actual cars and like mic them up and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, Ratchet and Clank are ripped apart. We got Resident Evil Village and we got Returnal. Returnal but, has really good audio design. And I would imagine Resident Evil Village also, because like horror games in general are like made or broken by their audio design. Returnal uses every single part of the dual sense controller and mm-hmm. a lot of the uh a lot of the stuff that happens is is it, 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 is, it comes through the speaker in, in the yeah. uh, in the controller, uh, which does get annoying sometimes. But mm-hmm. uh, I, Returnal did a really good job with the audio design. This one's hard. Uh, I feel like I'd be more equipped to to answer this if I actually played Forza. Right. Uh, so maybe maybe I'll play a little bit later and then be able to to come back with an answer. But but Returnal. Returnal did do a really good job with the audio design, I will say. Deathloop, I mean, sure. Why though? Like it, <laughs> it didn't. Like it's not like it. It didn't do anything that crazy with the audio design. You know what it is? Like it's it's that big budget AAA game that was very popular and everybody seems to like that. They're just going to nominate for everything, right? There's always yeah. one of those every year. You know, it's usually like a Skyrim. Or whatnot, or or Grand Theft Auto, and this year it's it's Death Loop's turn. I'm just trying to get to the page on Xbox so I can download it to my Xbox. I played a little bit of Halo today. We'll play. We'll we'll talk about that later. How about that? Yeah. Forgot about that. Join Xbox Game Pass. Hello. Did you not take my money? Anyway, next. Next. Best performance. Oh, I am not equipped to answer this at all. Uh, uh, I am. The answer is very simple. Uh, we have Erica Mori as Alex Chen in Life is Strange. We have uh, uh, Giancarlo Esposito as Anton Castillo. Castillo. We have uh, Jason Kelly as Colt Vaughn from Deathloop. Uh, we have Maggie Robertson as Lady... Dimitrisk. Dimitrisk. Oh, the, the, that one. Yes. <laughs> and we have Ozioma Akaga. I should have made you read this as Juliana Blake from uh, Deathloop. Uh, so the answer is 
Maggie Robertson, next category, please. I I agree. She did a phenomenal job yeah. as Lady. I mean, uh, what's her face? Dimitrisk. As as Look, Marcy says, vampire mommy. Yes, that's there you go. She did a great job as vampire mommy. I mean, look, I'm sure everybody else gave a fine performance. Uh, Giancarlo Esposito is cheating because he's coming from movies and television, um, even though he's great. Uh, but yeah, come on. I mean, nobody, none of these actors or characters were able to penetrate the zeitgeist Whoa. quite like uh, Dimitrisk did. And that is in part thanks to Maggie Robertson's performance. Penetrate was the right word, Will. Yep, I, I'm good with penetrating. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have enough room on my Xbox. Oh, whack. You got to get one of those $500 uh, expansion cards. I might have to. I ha- it's, it's 136 gigabytes. Really? Oh, God. Yeah. That's I the could... problem with like... That's the problem with racing games because those are like by default always like the graphical showcases for a next gen system. So of course that's yeah. gonna be a stupid, stupid amount of gigs. I can delete uh, uh, what's it called? I can delete uh, probably Call of Duty Cold War. Yeah. Mm. We're not buying another Call of Duty game. You know what? I'm gonna install for it a very at the long time. I'm gonna install it on Ease Xbox in the studio. Cause, uh, cause I, I might be able to get 120 frames out of this bad boy. There you go. <laughs> cause I don't have a 120 frame monitor here. Anyway, uh, games for impact, uh, for a thought provoking game with a pro social meaning or message. We got before mm. your eyes. These are usually indie games. We got yeah. uh, before your eyes. Never heard of it. Boyfriend dungeon. Heard of it? I heard that people really wanted that game, and then it came out, and I heard it wasn't that good. Oh, that's disappointing. Uh, Royalty 13 says, Forza doesn't have 120 hertz mode. All right, I got to uh, forget it. It's it's downloading already. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Key Corey, A Colorful Tale. Uh, I have heard of that. Life is Strange, True Colors, and uh, No Longer Home. All right, all right. Uh, fun fact, No Longer Home does not have a Wikipedia page. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, it's probably too indie. Yeah. I, I'm ill-equipped to answer this. I'm going next. Yeah. Uh, best ongoing. I like the, I actually like this category. I think this yeah, is this a good is a category. Smart yeah. category, yeah. Uh, because there, it feels like I don't want games like, for example, Apex Legends to release in Apex Legends 2 and then in Apex yeah. Legends 3 when it's the same fucking game every year. Like Call of Duty. I don't want yeah. them to turn into Call of Duty where they release the same game every year. Um, yeah. Just to keep people interested. Because it does work. It does keep people interested. But if you just call it best ongoing and you just have one game, one title that is always on people's yeah. minds, I think that's great. Uh, anyway, the nominees here are Apex Legends, Final Fantasy 4, 14, Fortnite, Genshin Impact, and Call of Duty Warzone. Now, Apex Legends uh, is a really big deal. It's very popular. It's very mm-hmm. good. I personally love Call of Duty Warzone. I think that's been doing really good. Uh, they've right. had a lot of mistakes, and it hasn't always been great. But right, uh, right now, I think it's still really good. Fortnite... I don't think so. Is that Carnage? That is Carnage. Yeah, I think they're adding Carnage. Uh, Fortnite, I'm completely over. Uh, I think... I'm I'm surprised more people aren't over. I know. Uh, Genshin Impact, a lot of people like that. I think, honestly, Final Fantasy XIV wins this. Because that game has been out forever, and for whatever reason, this year it exploded. The game came out originally in 2010, and it w- and it was like savaged upon release. Then in 2013, they rebooted it as a Realm Reborn, and now it is like almost as big as WoW is. It's incredible well, what this game has done. 
Well, Shoryuken in the chat says the game exploded due to the WoW Exodus. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, so I guess everybody was leaving WoW and jumping on Final Fantasy fourteen. There you go. That works. I I I honestly I think as much as I love Call of Duty Warzone, and as much as I think mm-hmm. Apex had a pretty huge year this year, also, I right. think Final Fantasy fourteen had the biggest. I think I think that they uh, yeah they're like a, like a prime example of why ongoing works really well why why mm-hmm. having a freaking 10 year old game 11 year old game uh can can still uh do really well for you and why you don't need to keep releasing increment incremental games or yearly yeah. games you know yeah, i do really love the fact that call of duty warzone is an ongoing and like they're not just gonna uh require you to buy a new 60 70 game every year yeah uh but that's just just how it is now. Mm-hmm. Um, another good example of that is like Rainbow Six Siege, which I think might have yeah. won last year or the year before that. Because um, yeah, that, that had that had a big turnaround. Yeah, it came out and it wasn't good, and then uh, they fixed it, and mm-hmm. it became one of the best ongoing games. Anyway, there's best indie game. 12 minutes. I didn't play it, but I watched other people play it, so it's kind of like playing it. I've heard that game is disappointing. <laughs> it sure is weird. Yeah. Uh, you basically just... you It's 12 minutes. You play the same 12 minutes over and over yeah. again until you figure yeah, out yeah. what's going on. Uh, Death's Door. We got Inscription. We got Kenna Bridge of Spirits. That counts as an indie. That game looks like a freaking like big blockbuster movie i mean indie games are getting a lot more ambitious and then we have loop hero is loop hero the game i'm thinking of endless rpg yes that is the game i'm thinking of randomly generated worlds where the player changes the world by placing cards instead of directly controlling the character Ember Lab is the company that made Kenna Bridge of Spirits. Yeah. Oh, did they do the? I think they did the Majora's Mask, uh, like 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 movie trailer, like like, oh. the, like the concept trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This thing, yeah. I remember that. That's cool. I'm tr- I'm trying to see how many people work at this company. <laughs> I, I, it, it would be pretty remarkable if if this was a an indie game. I have a feeling that Twelve Minutes is going to win this category because it had the highest profile out of all of these games. Mm-hmm. Maybe Kenna because that appears to be like have a very strong cult following. But Twelve Minutes because it had uh, Professor X, the Green Goblin, and Ray from Star Wars in it. And because it was put out by Annapurna, who's like a, a big deal, that that definitely has a higher profile than most of these games in here. Lucas Pitch says Kenna was made with 15 people. That's pretty friggin' incredible. That's impressive. Um, I didn't play any, any of these, and I have little uh, experience with any of them. Yeah. I, I feel like Kenna is like a remarkable achievement, but uh, I can't. I, I didn't play enough of it. Right. 12 minutes also has incest so pick your poison <laughs> that i did not know that i did know that. that is actually a major spoiler i shouldn't have said that but um, uh uh yes it does have that anyway best mobile game fantasia is that yeah that's it genshin impact a league of legends wild rift marvel future revolution and pokemon unite I feel like I'm in a bubble here uh, because Pokemon Unite is the winner for me. (laughs) Actually, I don't even have. I I didn't even know it came out on the phone. I got to download it on my phone. I have games on my phone, but I don't. I can't tell you the last time I played any of them was. Mm -hmm. I downloaded a game the other day and I forgot to play it. It was a potential uh, advertisement. Ah. I just just forgot to play it. Um. Anyway, uh, 
I mean, Genshin Impact's a big deal. I think a lot of people like that. But it came out last right. year, didn't it? I thought so. Wasn't yeah, that Genshin Impact? Because that's like a that's a very similar to Breath of the Wild, isn't it? Yeah, it's a knockoff of Breath of the Wild. With yes, because it was that and uh, Immortals: Phoenix Rising. That was like the start of the Breath of the Wild clones. It came out September last year. What are we doing here? Get yeah. this out of here. Uh. I don't see anybody talking about Marvel Future Revolution or honestly yeah. Leg uh, Legend of Zelda Wild Rift. And I've never heard of Fantasia before in my life. I'm voting for Pokemon Unite. Yeah. Because I don't think Genshin Impact counts. Maybe release a game this year. How about yeah. that? Best community support. Uh, recognizing a game for outstanding community support, transparency, and responsiveness. Uh, inclusive of social media activity and game update patches. Apex Legends, um, mm. Destiny 2. Destiny has some pretty good community support, even though uh, yeah. the game has kind of fallen off. Final Fantasy 14 Online, I have no idea. Uh, Fortnite and No Man's Sky. I feel I like mean, I'm not answering game... this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a tough one. I wouldn't put Fortnite, though. Their community support doesn't seem all that great. I don't think any I mean, of them, honestly. Yeah. No Man's I mean, Sky support, maybe now, but I mean, yeah. that, that would be some redemption arc. I mean, Fortnite may have good community support in that they keep updating it and releasing True. content for it, but nothing else. I mean, Final Fantasy fourteen. you know, like we said before, that's been on a roll. Mm -hmm. Um Destiny, I know you said it's got good community support. I mean, yeah, but uh, again, they haven't really done much. Uh -huh. um, that, at least lately. I'm I'm skipping this. Uh, okay. Innovation in accessibility. Okay. Okay. Uh, recognizing software and or hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features technology and content to help games that be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience i know that what always comes to mind is the last of us because they have like yeah. crazy accessibility features you can do all yeah. sorts of shit uh to make it uh easier to play if you have mm -hmm. any sort of disabilities or just if you just want to make it easier for yourself yeah. um i don't know i haven't heard anything about accessibility for any of these games i've heard Far Cry 6 has good accessibility for like visually impaired people. Mm -hmm. but that's all I've heard. Right. Uh, I saw who was it in the chat. Uh, sure, you can pizza. Guardians ha got my vote for accessibility. Uh, royalty. Forza has really good accessibility. They have sign language mode. Oh, I did see that. But but explain that to me, Will. <laughs> because look there's subtitles i know what's the I, difference I've, look i i am a privileged man who still has his hearing uh so i don't understand why you would opt for sign language over subtitles i'm maybe losing my hearing people, so i need to know i need to i need to know what i <laughs> what i need to look forward to <laughs> maybe for some people maybe for some people who are fluent in ASL, American Sign Language, that's easier for them to to read faster than subtitles. Royalty Maybe. 13 says, apparently a lot of context and tone gets lost with subtitles. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. What an interesting thing to like be to decide like as a company, like like we need that context and tone, so let's hire a sign language interpreter. Did you ever see that actually explains you ever see those videos of like the people who do sign languages for concerts? Yeah, and they're not they're going nuts. They they're go like, nuts. They put yeah, a lot that into it. That explains it, yeah. Whenever I see people doing sign language, like interpreting it, uh, they are yeah. putting a lot of emotion into it. Yeah. So I guess that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. We uh, learned something today, and that's important, boys and girls. You should always be learning something. That's why I asked the question. I knew I would look stupid, yeah. but we end up coming out smarter guys yes i'm skipping this category <laughs> <laughs> it's probably forza but i don't know uh yeah. best vr and ar we got hitman 3 what i didn't know that was vr uh, that's a ps4 exclusive mode you can play the game uh in first person 
I expect you to die too, which is uh, the like James Bond esque sort of uh, uh, keep talking and nobody yeah. explodes type thing. Um, we got Lone Echo too. Never heard of it. Resident Evil Four, which I want to play, and we got Sniper Elite yeah. VR. Uh, Sniper Elite VR sounds like it would be awesome in VR. <laughs> That's true. Um, so, I've actually heard that the VR in Hitman is not great. Ooh. And that's disappointing because I actually I played the opening level of Hitman 3 and it's fantastic. And I would have loved to have seen how it would have been in VR, but apparently it's not great. Uh, I would say just give it to Resident Evil 4. I mean, who are we kidding? Having not played any of these games, Resident Evil 4 takes it. <laughs> yeah. The answer uh, is always Resident Evil 4. I just feel like there's not much in the in the VR AR world to 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 nominate, you know. It's hard because a lot of the VR AR stuff is like essentially still just tech demos. And mm. I think it says a lot when one of the most talked about VR games of this year is a game that came out 20 years ago. Right. So all right, we got to plow through these. Best action right. game. This is such a dumb category. I hate this category. Best uh, game that has action in it. Uh, Back for Blood, which nobody likes. I don't yeah, know why that's, that's here that's at all. Shocking. That's shocking that nobody likes this game. That That's that's just... I feel like they like know the developers and just put it on here. Yeah. Uh, Chivalry 2. I don't know that one. Deathloop. I've heard, right. I've heard that game is interesting this is just like a second chance for some games to win who didn't make game of the year right well, far cry 6 games. far cry no. 6 is that you know what that is an action game though that is i an will action say game but it's if you played far cry 3 4 or 5 you've played this uh, Silent Mongoose says Metroid has action. Why is it not there? LOL. Because there's a weird, there's a really weird, like sort of criteria that they use for action game. So I, I, uh, not to skip ahead or anything, but on the IGN article below act best action game is best action adventure game. And Metroid is in that category. I also hate that category. I forgot about that yeah. category. Also hate that category. Actually, it doesn't Adventure make any even fucking sense. They just because that just encompasses a lot more games that like don't really have a clear, definitive kind of genre. Right. And there's one game in the action adventure category where that actually pisses me off. That's. <laughs> Um, I might just give this to Returnal. I heard bad things about Far Cry 6, and it just looks like Far Cry 3. So yeah. uh, I, I, I'm I, going to just give this to Returnal. Yeah. Um, anyway, next, I guess, is Action Adventure, Will. We got Guardians Let's of the see. Galaxy. We have yep. Metroid Dread. We have Psychonauts 2. We have Ratchet and Clank, and we got Resident Evil Village. Resident Evil is a horror series. It's yeah. a horror series series mm -hmm. and putting it in action adventure that's why people don't like resident evil 6 because it was it was an action game not a horror game mm -hmm. so that's disappointing do not vote for that for best action game because it's not an action game it's a horror game it's a horror game with action elements difference this is a stupid anyway, category um, i think of all of these metroid is honestly the only one that comes close to being a true action adventure because there's a lot of action in it and you are on an adventure you're exploring the you're exploring the world and the terrain and trying to solve puzzles it is the truest definition of the descriptor that it's giving so, so i yeah the description says for the best action adventure game combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving and that's literally that's literally metroid yeah. I, when i see a category like this i think that the reason it exists at all is uh for games that need a genre and games like yeah. uncharted would be action adventure uh like clearly our our action adventure yeah. um what else uh, uh, zelda like like you know zelda yeah uh but none of these games are like are like oh yeah that it, it needs to it needs its own category you know yeah 
Whatever, I'm voting Metroid anyway. Because Metroid's not nominated for, like, anything. It's nominated <laughs> for Game of the Year, and, like, that's it. Yeah. Anyway, best role-playing game. Uh, Cyberpunk. Cool, dude. Yeah, I'm going to vote for oh. that. So, a lot of people say that Cyberpunk is a good game that has... That has or Cyberpunk would have been a good game if it wasn't so broken. I say that. I, I say that there's a there's a good game buried underneath all that broken code somewhere. I disagree. I think it is a bad game riddled with <laughs> bad problems. I I, I, I think I, that there's I think that even if it ran good, it would still not be good. <laughs> That's what I think. I think I think I disagree, but I think we've gotten to the point where it's very obvious that CD Projekt Red uh is in no hurry to make this game right. playable. Or so, it's just too I, hard. They fucked up that badly. Yeah. So, when, when people internally were talking about the problems that they had with the game, they said yeah. they thought they were like two to three years out. <laughs> so yeah. like there might be two to three years till this game is done. And I'm sure yeah. they were also working on a new game because they can't just put yeah. everybody on Cyberpunk because they're still not going to sell that much. Yeah. Uh, I actually played Monster Hunter Rise, and that game is really good. Um, oh, okay, I'm. I actually forgot that game came out this year, and I am shocked. This is the only freaking category it's in. <laughs> um, I don't understand what's what's going on with some of these uh, nominees. Uh, Scarlet, Scarlet Nexus. Nexus. I think I played that. Oh, that's the game where like it doesn't look like it's gonna be a, be a weeb game, but then you play it, and it's a totally a weeb game. Did I? Where? Where did I? Like the cover? Have you seen the cover art for Scarlet Nexus? No. It it looks like it's very deceiving because it looks like it could oh, yeah. be like a like a Western dark fantasy it, type it, game. It looks like that game for Xbox 360 that was. <sighs> Oh, you have like prototype. a big arm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it looks, looks like, like prototype. That. Yeah. But no, there's it's a, it's, it's, it's a weeb the, game. There's a mobile game that I played that was a weeb game. And it was at yeah. and I it was for a potential sponsorship, and it was actually sick, and then I didn't get the sponsorship for some reason. Uh, but it looked a lot like this. I wonder if this was it. Is this also a mobile game? No, it's a PS5 game. I mean, I could just look at my phone. The hell was the name of that mobile game? Well, I don't want to give them free promotion. They denied me. There you go. So. PGR? I don't know. I don't anyway. Know. Uh, I did hear good things about whatever this is. <laughs> uh, Shin Megami Tensei 5. Highly anticipated. Been yeah. hearing about it for four years. And it came out like a week ago. To <laughs> And I didn't hear anything about it. All of a sudden. Yeah. And Tales of Arise? I don't know. Never heard of that one. Um, so, I mean, Monster Hunter Rise. I mean, Sumagami Tensei, I feel like... Uh, I mean, again, like, it came out and I didn't really hear anything about it. Yeah. I'm surprised, too, because, like, that was, like, the most anticipated game on Switch. Yeah. Unless I'm just in a bubble. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that should probably win unless it's really not as good as, as everybody thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. I'm going to vote for Monster Hunter because uh, I think it's a great game. And that's all I got. And I'm also, I also don't right. like role-playing games. So <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're making me like a role-playing game, then whatever. Okay. Best fighting game. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl is a bad game. I'm surprised they put that in there. Well, they put fucking that that uh the Shonen Jump one. What the hell was that uh, called? Jump Force. That's, Jump Force. That game sucked, and they put well, that well, as best fighting game too. I don't know if you saw it. That's going to be pulled from digital stores soon because they're losing the license. I did see that, and uh, nobody uh, nobody's nobody crying. Anyway, you got Demon Slayer. I didn't know that was. A, a, I didn't know that had a fighting game. Guilty Gear Strive looks uh, incredible, and that yeah. has a really big community around it. 
Um, Melty blood type I lumina. What the fuck is this? I I I abstained from reading the whole Demon Slayer title. By the way, <laughs> that yeah. has a worse title. Um. Anyway, Nick Nicktoons All Star Brawl does not get it, and Virtua Fight of Five Ultimate Showdown. I'm gonna give it a guilty uh, gear. Yeah, I mean, Virtual Fighter Five is really just like it's a re. I don't know if it's a remake or a port of an older game. It's like an attempt to try to bring back Virtual Fighter, right. but the game is relatively the same. Uh, next we got Best Family, the Wolf Family. Yes. <laughs> uh, it takes two. I, 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 it's interesting. That's a family game. Yeah. Mario Party Superstars. Fuck that game. Game sucks. So I oh, was God. at a bachelor party this weekend mm -hmm. and one of my friends actually had Mario Party Superstars and we mm -hmm. played it. I unambiguously, without question, came in fourth place. <laughs> and yet somehow I won the whole thing. Yep. It throughout like once the actual board game part ended, it yep. said, Well, fourth place. And then they just pump me full of coins and shit. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I'm in first. I don't know how that happened, why that happened. Because the, the mini games were kind of trash. The, the board made no sense. And you know, I'm doing my best here. And I come in fourth. I accept my fate. And all of a sudden, I win the whole game. <laughs> Yeah, you're like asleep at the wheel and the game like weakened at Bernie's you and you're you're all of a sudden in first. That's why how, the game sucks. How has this series been going on for as long as it has with whack mechanics like that? Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. have we not caught on? Uh, apparently you can turn that off, but nobody okay. ever does. Like you can turn yeah. off the, the, the participation trophies, basically. Um, aside from so, what do you think about the game now that you played it? Eh, not it's all right, I guess. <laughs> anyway, we got not new Pokemon good. Snap, which wasn't good. Also, I didn't really like mm -hmm. that that much. Um, we got Super Mario 3D World Bowser's Fury, which was very good. Yeah. I may be a little biased there, but that was a very good game. And uh, Warrior Wear Get It Together, which was good, but uh, I don't think it's a good family game. It's just, yeah, the multiplayer really doesn't work that good. Uh, so I'm gonna vote for Super Mario 3D World and Bowser go. Fury. Uh, best sim slash strategy. I feel like I should just skip this. <laughs> Microsoft Flight Simulator's on there. That should probably win. I mean that that is a sim. Yeah. This is another stupid category because how can you put sim games and strategy games together? Well, because sometimes strategy games simulate something. Okay. Like a battle or like fine. Some or like community or like city management if it's Sim City. How is Age of Empires 4 in the same game category <laughs> as Microsoft Flight Simulator? It it is a strategy game where you simulate classical battles throughout history. So this is like, should I buy Call of Duty or Madden? That's what this <laughs> is. I'm skipping this category. Well, stupid category. Okay. All right. All right. Best sports and racing game. This I understand. This I understand. Because racing is a sport. Right. And I like how of all these games, there's only one non-racing game on there. Uh, true. Fucking FIFA. And didn't everybody hate FIFA this year? I mean, everybody hates FIFA every year, I thought. I'm um, voting for Forza Horizon 5 because of all the hoopla go. I've heard about it. Um, so, wasn't there that uh, that Ubisoft game that everybody liked where you got like the squirrel suit? Isn't that Riders Republic? Oh, Ubisoft. Okay, maybe it's that. Yeah. Anyway, next, we got Best Multiplayer, Back for Blood. Nobody liked that game. Why is it here? I feel so bad for it. Uh, Knockout City, which was actually really good. Mm -hmm. It Takes Two, which I still have to play. Monster Hunter Rise, finally. 
uh new world oh new world a lot of people that, really like new world yeah i'm surprised that game is as popular as it is and valheim which also a lot of people like that yeah they one of the developers is called coffee stain uh i'm abstaining from this uh Okay. I feel like New World should probably win. It takes two, maybe for its innovation. Yeah. But uh, I really enjoyed my time with Monster Hunter Rise and Knockout City. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of at a, at a standstill here with this one. Uh, I mean, I haven't played any of these, and I typically don't play multiplayer games. So, content creator of the year, Dream. Uh, skip. None of them are us. <laughs> I only know Dream and Foosley. I don't know any of these other people. And I don't even know their content. I yeah. only see Foosley on live stream fails and other people's streams. So, uh, I don't know. And Dream, like, I guess last year he got canceled for cheating in Minecraft. Um, and I guess people are over it now. Anyway. Oh, good for him. Best debut indie? Okay. I mean... I guess it's good to give yeah. indies more categories. Um, the Artful Escape, The Forgotten City, Kenna, Bridge of Spirits, Sable, which looks great, and uh, Valheim. Uh, Valheim, I feel like, was like a huge deal. Really? This is the first time I'm hearing of it. It was like a really big multiplayer game. Mm. Uh, I'm skipping this. Uh, we got Most Anticipated, Elden Ring, which has been blowing up right now. Yeah. Oh, is that why they released the demo? Because the Game Awards? Probably. So people can drum up all this hype. God of War Ragnarok. Um, it looks like God of War. I don't know. I, I, I don't even think I'm going to get Ragnarok. Uh, Horizon uh, Forbidden West. I mean, it looks good. Um, yeah. The Legend of Zelda, the I'm sorry, the sequel to sequel. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And Starfield, which isn't going to come out for like a long time. Yeah. Oh, no. I mean, Starfield, I'm... they said 2022, I think. Did they? What did they say? Whatever they said, oh. add a year, because there's no fucking way. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, they said November 11th, 2022. Absolutely not. It's going to be spring uh, 2023 for sure. Yeah. And um, we're not seeing Breath of the Wild 2 until like 2024. I'm calling it now. Yeah. Zelda always gets delayed. and but, yeah. but, but Nintendo finally put a window on it. I don't know if that kind of snuck under the rug. Yeah. But uh, Nintendo made a little tweet the other day. They tweet too much. <laughs> they made like a little here it is the infographic that says like what's up next for Nintendo Switch, and it says 2022 the sequel to the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and also Bayonetta three. There you go. So uh, well, yeah, that 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 means it's coming out. It's slated to come out next year. I assume the holidays. It'll probably be delayed a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I, f I feel like it's Elden Ring, but only because they they like cheesed it by releasing a demo right before the Game Awards. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Elden Ring. I mean, that's that's had hype for a while because it's from Software meets uh, George R R Martin. But mm -hmm. yeah, I guess it would have to be Elden Ring. I mean, none of these are my most anticipated game. True. What is your anti most anticipated game? Will? I don't know. I don't even know what's coming out anymore. <laughs> I mean, Spider-Man 2 looks great. Uh, I'm interested in Gotham Knights uh, in terms of non-comic book licensed games. I don't really know. Oh, Perfect Dark. I'm yes, in I am actually really excited for Perfect Dark. I'm hoping, yeah. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I don't... I, I mean, I'm not a... Uh... I'm not sitting here or like uh, like counting the days until anything, really. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna skip this. Uh, best esports game: Call of Duty. Just any Call of Duty. Okay. Um, 
Counter Strike Global Offensive. That game's been uh-huh. around forever. Yeah. Dota 2, League of Legends, and Valorant. Uh, so I guess Dota this is, 2 is on here. Yeah, that is weird. I guess this is just completely uh, uh, disregarding what year it came out. Yeah. Well, yeah. Most esports games are like old. I think but it's really I, weird I don't... to just put Call of Duty, period. Like the whole series is just one part of the category. Well, they usually play the latest one when they do esports. Right. Right. Uh, I don't even think people play Dota 2 anymore. I think Valorant has to take this because, uh, yeah. But then again, like Valorant came out last year, and uh, I don't know like what the community is like now. Yeah. Apparently, League of Legends is still going very strong. Mm-hmm. So is Counter Strike. Apparently. Well, yeah, Counter Strike. You, you can't kill Counter Strike. I mean, Call of Duty's been great too, but I've been watching uh, uh, all the stuff I watch is Warzone stuff. I don't really watch like the actual like esports stuff yeah i'm voting valorant uh right. next uh esports athlete i don't know any of these people <laughs> i think i saw yep, an interview uh, with tens once skip oh i skipped too i skipped too much uh best esports no, no. team we're skipping that too Uh, best esports coach. <laughs> Once again, we're skipping that. And best esports event. And we're done. Okay, there you go. We did it. Uh, Good so job, everybody, are there any games we wish we would have seen there? Like, I feel I'm like there's games think. missing. I'm trying to think of like all the games that like came out. Even like if I haven't played it, then I'm like I'm aware of that had a lot of buzz. Um, and it just just isn't there, right? Uh, I'm uh, I'm really bad at like remembering the games that I recently played. Yeah. So what I will do instead is go to Twitch Tracker and look at my most recently played games. <laughs> there you go. Last scene. Let's do that. Um. We got Metroid Dread, of course. We got Deathloop. Halo Infinite, which just came out, which we'll talk about. Um, Mm -hmm. We promise. We promise we'll talk about it. Pokemon Unite. I'm surprised we didn't see more of that. Yeah. Um, Mario Golf Super Rush. Where is that in the uh, sports category? Oh, yeah. I think Mario Tennis was in the sports category when that came out. I thought people liked Mario Golf. It was good. I mean, I played it and then forgot about it. Um, yeah, we did. We did see Mario Party. This is a different Mario Party, though. Um, I'm all, I'm back all the way in March. Monster Hunter Rise. I am surprised we did see more of Monster Hunter Rise. Mm-hmm. Um, we did see Returnal. Uh, and I think I think that's it. Super Meat Boy Forever. I think came out at the end of last year, maybe. Yeah. Um, I played it early this year, though. Uh, Cyber Shadow. Or is that for indies? I guess everybody, just, nobody was able to beat it. <laughs> Where's the platformers category, Will? See, that's that's a category that definitely should exist, but they probably will just lump that in like action or action adventure. Right. Or fucking Mario's in family game. Right. When it's obviously a platformer. So, I mean, this year had a lot of good stuff. It just didn't really have anything that was, like, really, like, earth-shattering. Yeah, nothing that, like, stood out as much as, like, some other years. Yeah. So, uh, not very exciting, really, coming out of the Game Awards. Uh, We didn't organize this right. Let's talk about (laughs) Halo! Yeah! Yeah! So there was the Xbox 20th anniversary live stream uh, yesterday in celebration of 20 years of the Xbox. Uh, There were some news announcements and then there were a lot of just like, you know, hey, isn't Xbox great? Um, One of the main news announcements was uh, the Halo Infinite multiplayer mode 
is out. It's wow. out right now. Three weeks early. You can play it. So I was uh, a non-believer. This was a rumor that was going on f all weekend. People were saying that the uh, th they were rumoring the same people who were rumoring certain other things that were rumored uh, this year. Right. They were rumoring that uh, the uh, Xbox that, that Microsoft is going to just drop Halo multiplayer uh, yesterday uh, on the Xbox's 20th anniversary. And I was like, yeah. I was like, no shot because that game is not finished and it's it, 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 they have they've been having a lot of problems like how are they going to just drop the multiplayer how are they just going to drop the multiplayer and make it free for everybody and just have everybody play it before the game's even out yeah. that that they they've been taking their sweet time and but part of the rumor was also that there was going to be a campaign demo so not get and and the, the the rumor was that the full multiplayer was going to be released what we have is a demo of just the multiplayer. However, well, not not the demo. I'm sorry. It's a beta of just the yes. multiplayer. But it is the whole multiplayer. Whole multiplayer and, mode. And all of your stuff transfers over to the full game. So it is just the full multiplayer. Yes. They probably just had to put beta in there to cover their ass. But I mean, for all intents and purposes, this is it. This is the multiplayer mode of Halo Infinite. Yes, so I was a non-believer, and uh, here we are. Now we got Halo. And I played a little bit of it today. Uh, it seemed to be a little bit better than it was during the test flight that I played it, because there was right. a little more problems. Um, I played it on my EVE Spectrum monitor. I was getting 4K. It looked like it was 120 hertz, um, but it said 120 the whole time, and I don't really believe that. <laughs> Like right. usually it like dips a little bit so you can tell that it's like the counter actually works. Um, but it was incredibly smooth and everything ran great and it was it was really fun. Nice. Um, I was disappointed to learn that uh, uh, my the, the Xbox does not do uh, ultra wide. However, oh. if, if you have Halo on your PC, it does support ultra wide. Interesting. So if you have an ultra wide monitor, you could play Halo in ultra wide. Uh, so that's the, another fun thing is that if you don't have an Xbox, you can just play this on your PC. I think you need a pretty decent PC in order to do it, though. You can, you know, right? Mess around. Um, but it's really fun. So I think I think it's it's fucking awesome that it came out. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's it's a great way to like satiate fans until the main game comes out. I think it's a great. You know, it's sort of like an apology for, you know, delaying it for so long. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it'll also, too, it will definitely generate hype for when the full game does come out because you'll be playing it for all this time. And Halo is one of those one of the rare first person shooters where people play an equal amount of single and multiplayer. So I think this is good incentive to get people hooked in now for when the campaign comes. And I think making it free to play is a great way to yeah. sell Xboxes. Because, I mean, oh, you yeah. can just get it on your PC. Uh, right. But, but uh, that's the new model now, is free-to-play, always online, always active games. Because you just sell yeah. other shit in the game, and then you have whales that purchase everything. Um, yeah. But not at, I feel like most people can't afford a good PC. So yeah. they're going to be at a friend's house playing Halo or maybe on their dinky little PC trying to play yeah. Halo. And then they're going to be like, mom, for Christmas, I want a Series S or something. And then they're yeah. going to and, and then they're going to get into Xbox. So I wish this would have came out, you know, when the game when the system launched to sell more Xboxes. Yeah. But uh, I think this is a great uh, I think they're being very pro consumer right now. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I also have this little guy. I want. Well, uh, yeah, I'll show it right now. Screw it, dude. Okay. We got the Halo Elite controller that I already opened. Oh, I did see that. I did see you tweet about that. So I, uh, I've always wanted an Elite controller, but I wanted like yeah. I was waiting for like the Elite Three or something. Yeah. And uh, they released a special edition, so I was like, "F it." But now, look at how pretty it is. I don't want to. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to play with this. I want, I want to just put this on display somewhere. 
it is a very nice looking controller. Yeah, it's got it's got little blue accents. It's got it's yeah. got the little rubberized grips. It's got the little paddles. I need these paddles though. These paddles would be very helpful. Yeah. Um, and then you got a little D pad, which I should probably put on. It's very nice. It's this is mm-hmm. this is uh way nicer than I deserve. <laughs> oh yeah, and you can charge it through the case. I forgot about that. Yeah, because it has a built-in battery, which is nice. Built-in battery? Yeah. Oh, it, on the controller. Yeah, I thought you meant the case. Yeah. I thought you meant in yeah. the case, like a, like no, a no, freaking AirPod. In the controller, yeah. Yeah, you can just put the cable through there. That's freaking. This yeah. thing is freaking awesome. So yeah, I've never had an Elite controller before. So that's why I wanted to get my hands on that. Uh, but yeah, then again, I feel like I don't want to use it because it's just too pretty. Looking. Yeah. And I have other, I have other controllers anyway. Mm-hmm. Anyway, what else happened during this 20th anniversary celebration? Uh, what else happened? They announced uh, Power On, the story of Xbox. Uh, it's going to be a six-part documentary series released on December 13th on YouTube and a whole bunch of other places. Looks neat. Uh, the Rock is giving away a whole bunch of prizes in conjunction with this movie Red Notice, including an oil painting of when he introduced the first Xbox back in 2000. Because... That man is just a cartoon character. I'm oh, okay. he's not real. Uh, I'll mention this before we get on to the other big thing that they mentioned. Buried in the post. Uh, for fans who want to hear more about the early days of Xbox and the innovation that Xbox has fostered with gaming, we're also excited to announce the Xbox Pioneers Creativity and Innovation Past, Present, and Future. This discussion will be moderated by former Nintendo USA president and COO Reggie fils and feature what? Xbox visionaries Robbie Bach, Ed Fries, uh, Peter Moore, and Bonnie Ross. What the uh, fuck? So, yes. Reggie, Mr. Nintendo himself, is going to be moderating a, an Xbox panel uh, that will be broadcast on... No- uh, November 22nd at 10 a.m. Pacific on the Microsoft Alumni Network's YouTube channel. That's incredible. I, I hope it's. I hope to God it's just him talking about the Wii kicking their ass for the whole 360 generation. Yeah, I hope he like is snarky the whole time. I hope so. Oh my God. This uh, this YouTube channel, by the way, has 83 subscribers. <laughs> What the wow. fuck? I, I feel mean, like most people in this chat right now, I feel like a lot of people in this chat right now have more subscribers than the alumni network. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's crazy. But the other big thing that they announced during this and the thing I'm most excited for, because I'm weird like that, um, Xbox has announced 76 new backwards compatible games for the Xbox One and the Xbox Series consoles, and many of them with enhancements. So if you don't remember, they put the backwards compatibility program on Xbox One on pause so they can focus on uh, getting Series X and S out the door. And they came back yesterday with 76 new games uh, compatible off for the Xbox One and the Xbox Series across the original Xbox and Xbox 360. Games including... The original Max Payne trilogy, so all three Max Payne games. The original Red Dead Revolver. Uh, Time Splitters 2 and Time Splitters Future Perfect. Um, a whole bunch of Star Wars games, including a Jedi Outcast and uh, Starfighter. Uh, Mortal Kombat th- uh, 2011. My favorite Mortal Kombat game is finally backwards compatible on Xbox One. Uh, 50 Cent Blood in the Sand. <laughs> I see Jedi Outcast. Yes. Uh the Star you get the Star Wars games, you get Starfighter, uh Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, The Clone Wars and Jedi Outcast. What about uh the newer Perfect Dark, the 360 Perfect Dark? That's already backwards compatible. All right, good. Never mind. This is this is just filling in the gaps. My friend texted me about this and was like, 70 new backwards com- or no, he said 70 backwards compatible games. That's incredible." Yeah. I was like, do you know that almost the whole library is already backwards compatible? <laughs> so, not almost the whole library. Uh, we're still mi- we're still missing 
a bunch. Uh, like for example, the original version of Arkham Asylum and Arkham City are not on this are not on this list. Mm-hmm. They're not backwards compatible. Um, the original Halo from the original Xbox is not backwards compatible. That is um, dumb. There's a lot of like weird odds and ends things. For the most part, any game you want to play is here. It's yes. like backwards compatible, but there might be situations where like the game got remastered and they want you to get the remaster or it's just lost the time. Uh, what was not explicitly said in the broadcast and what was buried in the full Xbox wire post was this drop was is going to be the final backwards compatibility update for Xbox One and Xbox Series. What? They they're said, not. They're not doing Xbox. They're not even touching any of the extra Xbox One games anymore. Uh, if you mean original Xbox games, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Xbox no. One. I know <laughs> the first uh, Xbox. Yeah. So, per the post, this latest and final edition of seventy titles to the backwards compatibility backwards compatibility program nailed it was only possible through the passion and feedback from the community. Your constant requests for specific titles and enhancements encourage backwards compatibility team to partner with the original creators to preserve thousands of games uh, from over four generations of Xbox. While we continue to stay focus on preserving and enhancing the art form of games, we have reached the limit of our ability to bring new games to the catalog from the past due to licensing, legal, and technical constraints. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us. Damn, that's a that sucks. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate because I and I know there are more games out there that I I can't remember I can't think of, um, but I I guess like they just they hit they hit the ceiling on what they could conceivably do. That's so I mean, weird. Technical, technical, I understand. Legal, I understand because I'm sure you know EA does not want you know a random Madden from 2004 to be on. Uh, a modern Xbox system, but like some of like the Microsoft first party stuff, like I said, the original Halo, I don't think is backwards compatible. I don't understand why you can't just put an Xbox emulator on this bad boy and be like, "Hey, uh, any games that are not officially compatible, you can put the disc in, and we'll f- we'll figure it out through the emulator." And whatever yeah, it, it runs, it, it, it runs. It is a weird way that they decided to do it where it was like game by game rather than just a whole like i mean i understand that they want it to be perfect they they want every game to run really right. good but but and, and i understand why that would limit them legally and and, and, and yeah. through licensing that's a problem because they can't work on a game that they don't have the yeah. license for anymore but i have the game i want to play it yeah let let just develop an emulator that'll just do it or, or do yeah. it to the best of its ability. We'll we'll take the hit in quality if it's gonna if it because because fucking ninety it does it ninety nine percent correctly in an emulator. Yeah. The emulators that exist that fans have made are doing great for original Xbox. Yeah. Uh. So there are now currently six hundred and thirty two uh, Xbox three hundred and sixty games available on Xbox One and Series out of two thousand one hundred and fifty four. So, less than half of the Xbox 360 oh. game. Yeah. I thought it was way more than that. No. I mean, 600 whatever is a lot. Mm. Uh, and in terms of original Xbox, um, there are currently 63 out of 997 games. What available. the fuck? I thought it was way more than that. No. This, I, guess it's what just, I, mean. I guess it's just the ones that you would care about. <laughs> Yeah, it's the ones you would care about. It's all the high, the highest profile ones. Um, but yeah, like the original Halo is not on there. Um, I think this the Silent Hill from the, X, the original Xbox era isn't on here. Yeah, I don't understand yeah, why uh, they don't just Bionic Commando rearmed is not on here, but Bionic Commando rearmed two is, <laughs> and nobody likes rearmed two. I don't understand why they didn't just why they don't just uh, uh, let us put the disc in and have the system figure it out. 
Uh, yeah, it even, is, even if it's not perfect, I mean, it's it'll at least it's at least it does something, you know. I will say, however, that despite that, you know, despite the fact that they're ending the program, Xbox has done more for backwards compatibility these past two generations True. than S- Nintendo or Sony combined. So the fact yeah. that we got that much, you know, I think speaks volumes. And not only that, but a lot of a lot of the games have gotten a lot of enhancements to them, so they play even better than when they originally did. Um, for example, games have auto HDR on Series X and S, so all the games will ha- have you know automatic HDR regardless of whether or not they had it. Uh, the original Xbox games will get uh, four times the resolution increase. On Series X and Xbox One X, uh, 11 games, including Fear, Fear 3, a Binary Domain, uh, will get 60 frames per second support, thanks to FPS Boost. Um, more games are also going to get uh, FPS Boost, including the Gears games. Um, they specifically called out Sonic Generations in, their, in the live stream. That's going to get a 60 frame per second boost. Um, they, so they, not they only do are have they... a crazy amount of 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 like weird support, like high resolutions on all their old yeah. games and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Every backwards compatible title added will experience improved visuals with auto HDR support on supported displays. There, uh, there, there used to be a list that like, yeah. or like, or like a table that gave you like the games that supported sixty frames or even four K. Yeah. I can't seem to find it anymore. Uh, what else? It might be too big now. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is all. This is exciting. Uh, I'm excited because I I kind of did want to play Max Payne three again, and now I can just go and get it from mom and dad's house. And I'm ecstatic that Time Splitters two and three are available because those were not playable. Those are original Xbox games, and those were not included on Xbox 360 backwards compatibility uh, due to controller issues. So the fact that they are playable now is fantastic. Time Splitters 2 is a great game, and I hope everybody plays it now. Did you know that there's Transformers in Smite now? Uh, no. <laughs> I was just looking at uh, I was just looking at the, the, the games with like, uh, you know, fps boost yeah and i saw smite transformers uh-huh. and i was like what and apparently there's <laughs> okay transform smite is you play as different gods and stuff yeah and uh yeah i mean here here you are yeah. I, I only played smite once and it was because wood asked me to play it with him for a video and then in the middle of the video i found out it was an ad <laughs> and I was like, "What the fuck?" And I didn't get paid. Isn't, isn't Smite? <laughs> isn't Smite a MOBA, but it's like a third-person MOBA? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm not into MOBAs, but I, yeah, I, I think it's interested that you're a Transformer fighting literal gods. <laughs> they also had a. Uh, Ninja Turtles at one point. I remember that. In Smite? In Smite. Yeah. Interesting. Uh anyway. Cool. Uh we we uh, I'm I'm sad that they're ending the 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 uh the the program yeah. cuz cuz they did a phenomenal job so far. Mhm. But uh, uh, I get I, I guess uh we got to we got to take what we can get. One last thing I'll say about it. Uh and this is kind of sad. Um so included in this list, this final list was Skate Two. Oh. Uh, so that makes that means as of now, the entire EA Skate trilogy uh, is playable on Xbox One and Series X and S. Uh, the day of the announcement, the official Skate Twitter account said, "Like, yay, hooray! Uh, it's playable on Xbox One." Uh, subtweet. Servers will be shutting down for this game later, uh, late in December. Please be please sure to save all your stuff and whatnot. Oh my god! <laughs> so, so like I, we fi- 
you're finally able to play it again on a modern console, and they're like, oh, by the way, we're still shutting down the servers. Oh, well, that just means you can't play online. That's not like, yeah. really an online game. I know. Anyway. I just I just think it's like, it's kind of funny. <laughs> it's kind of, you gotta admit, it's kind of funny. Uh, we haven't read notifications in a really long time. I'm sorry, oh, yeah. everybody. Um, you guys. Oh, yeah, you guys are here, too. <laughs> uh, we got Battle Tank Cup. Battle Tank Bob with five months. Yay, five months or whatever. I wonder if Bob ever got a cupcake. Let me let me tell you this story, Will. It was oh, yeah. Sam's birthday yesterday, my roommate. Mm. I bought Happy cupcakes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, they were here for like a few hours. Yeah. And I was like, I want one, but he didn't eat one yet. <laughs> can I just Can I just eat one? Or do I have to wait for him to eat one? You have to, as long as you present them, you so, start eating them. So what I did was after the stream, uh huh, he was in the living room, and I said, "I'm gonna have a cupcake," and then I just ate a cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> I announced it. Anyway, um, no banana suits. Hey man, thanks for gifting two subs. I appreciate it. One of them was to BB Retro. Thanks, bro. Uh, Captain Potts, thank you for the 18 months. Just got on. I finally got an Xbox SX and love it. Forza is the bomb. I need to uh, delete some stuff so I can play it. I was very tempted. The um, the Halo Edition Series X was like flashed up on sale. And I almost bought it. But I didn't. It's mm. very tempting. Uh, yo, it that looks sick. Yeah, no, it really does. Uh, Jay Cannon with eight months. Returnal is a great game, but Metroid is my gaudy. I, 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 yes, I see where you're coming from. I think a lot of people would agree with you on that. Jaron Church with the hundred bits. Thank you very much. We got Edward mm-hmm. Bova who gifted a sub and then gifted another sub and then subbed himself. And there you go. Thank you very much, Edward Bova. That's how you do it. Uh, Disc Cart, how are you doing, my guy? Thank you for the Prime subscription. And Jaron Church with another Hundo Bits. Anyway, we got more news to plow through. We got a lot more news to plow through. We'll try oh. to plow, actually plow through them. Oh, would you look at that? The Steam Deck got delayed. Womp womp. Uh, they, uh, a Steam Deck shipping update. This came out as an email to uh, to people who had pre-orders first. Yes. Uh, it didn't go out as a news article or anything. It went out to pre-orders first, which I guess is probably the way it should go. Um, it, it This says, the launch of the Steam Deck will be delayed by two months, period. <laughs> That's the first <laughs> sentence. We're sorry about this. We did our best to work around the global supply chain issues, but due to um, material shortages... Components aren't reaching or manufacturing facility our manufacturing facilities in time for us to meet our initial launch dates. Based on our updated uh, build estimates, Steam Deck will start shipping to customers February 2022. This will be the new start date of the reservation queue. All reservation holders keep their place in line, but dates will shift back accordingly. Reservation date estimates will be updated shortly after this announcement. Again, we're sorry we won't be able to make our original ship date. We'll continue working to improve reservation dates based on the new timeline, and we'll keep folks updated as we go. Uh, So, I mean... It's it sucks, but it happens. I mean, there's all. Yeah. This isn't the only thing that got delayed. Uh, there, it basically, all hardware has been delayed this year. Yeah, it's been rough. Yeah. The only um, reason the OLED I, switch wasn't delayed was because it was probably internally already delayed. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I I I hope we get a date in February because I I got things I want to do and I mm-hmm. I. I want to be here for when the Steam Deck comes out so I can make a video. Yeah, I mean, as it, it totally sucks. Um, at least they're still committed to putting it out. Um, and hopefully this is the only delay it gets because it's mm-hmm. very possible that it keeps getting delayed. The other thing that got delayed 
is the oh, yeah. play date. Uh, the, cr- yeah. the silly little cranky console. That's been delayed a couple of times, hasn't it? Uh, probably. Yeah. Guess what? It got delayed again. Uh, yeah. With lots of pre-orders in place, we immediately placed an order. No, who is this? I don't know. Who, I don't know who that is. I want to read their statement. Uh, a newsletter. Pre- play order customers. Thanks for pre-ordering and playdate. Now that you're a part of the club, we'll get you updated. Blah, blah, blah. First, uh, a surprise. First, overcoming a surprise battery issue. As our first 5,000 finished Playdate units arrived at our warehouse in California for 2021, we began to test a few of them. We quickly became concerned that some of them weren't giving us the battery life we expected. Playdate's battery is designed to last a very long time and always be ready for you, even if not uh, used for a while. But that was not the case. In fact, we found a number of units with batteries so drained, Playdate wouldn't power on at all and wouldn't be charged and couldn't be charged. That's a battery worst case scenario. That is a that is very bad. So it's basically a recall. This quickly turned into a months long all hands on deck research stress ball and we halted production at the factory. The conclusion we made the difficult, expensive decision to replace all of our existing batteries with brand new ones from a totally different battery supplier. It was extra frustrating because when we built our developer preview units, the exact same type of batteries worked just fine. But something somewhere we're researching changed between then and now, and the new ones did not work just fine. We have no time to waste, so we're moving on. And so we shipped 5,000 finished playdates back to Malaysia to get to be given new batteries. How did that feel? Not great. Honestly, after reading that, I feel a lot. I feel for them now because, like, that means yeah. that they're actually trying really hard to make sure that it is a really good quality device. Yeah, and and the fact that they were very honest and open about like what exactly the problem was, I think, mm-hmm. says a lot about them as a company. You know, so most people just say like, "Oh, it's got delay," and give some vague reason, but like they were very specific. Uh, the battery should last a really long time because the screen is just like a friggin' like black and white like like it's like an L C D situation. It's like an E ink screen, isn't it? I don't know exactly. Yeah. I don't want to say E ink because that's usually really slow, isn't it? Yeah, it's very slow. I think it's more like a like a calculator L C D situation. Okay. It's black and white. It's it's just it's yeah. literally it's and it's it's uh uh it's literally just bicolor. It's just black or white. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that they're fixing that. It's unfortunate that they have to delay it. Yeah. I'm still very, uh, uh, I still feel very weird about this console in general. I feel like, uh, oh yeah, no, it's def, it's definitely a weird console. Yeah, it's a weird thing, I, and I don't know how the games are going to be, but uh, we'll, we'll see when it comes out. Hopefully it gets hacked and I can put some freaking Game Boy games on it because having a yeah. uh, something like that, that's that's uh, like bi color like that, and that the, the battery lasts a really long time. I feel like that could that has potential for some great Game Boy stuff. Although it's not going to be yeah. backlit, so <laughs> that might <laughs> might be some problems. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I think the next thing that's going to get delayed is the Aya Neo. That's the uh, mm, yeah. The the no, not the Aya, the Ein Odin. That's right. the which uh, one's the the Neo was the uh, Windows tablet that came out already. Right. The oh, Ein okay. Odin is the thing that was on Indiegogo that can emulate like oh, GameCube games and stuff. Yeah. I think that that is the next thing to get delayed. It's- I think the next thing that's going to get delayed is the Intellivision Amico because that's oh, been yes. delayed a whole bunch of times now. <laughs> of course. Well, real quick, uh, GTA Remastered is out and everybody hates it. Yeah, it's apparently it's a it's a buggy, glitchy, unfinished mess. Um, I didn't want to put I didn't want to load this episode up with too many stories regaling about how. Um, it's broken and it's unfinished and take two is even issuing DMCA strikes against people who post videos of the, of the glitches on YouTube and whatnot. Uh, but what I did want to talk about what I found very interesting 
is that it appears that some code from the infamous hot coffee controversy <laughs> is still in the collection as well as songs that were cut presumably over licensing. Some of this could explain why the game is uh, or was unavailable on PC for a time. Uh, shortly after the remastered trilogy was released, data miners and fans quickly began digging into the files and code of the collection. What they found was surprising. Buried in the definitive edition, numerous pieces of code, scripting, and files that shouldn't be there, including dev comments, cut content, and more. Also found in these files, code connecting, code connecting to the infamous Hot Coffee Sex minigame. That is according to multiple data miners on social media, as well as popular GTA expert and data miner Vadim M, who talked uh, about recently discovering the code. Uh, oh, good. They give you a brief bit of history. So, for those of you who don't know, when Grand Theft Auto San Andreas came out in 2004 originally, uh, I was in high school, uh, there was buried deep in the code of the game the ability to actually have sex with your girlfriend sex. like and it was a playable sex not that sex Shh. not that sex. it was a it was a playable mini game like you actually had to like hit the right button combinations to keep the rhythm of the whole experience going it was it was pulled from the game so in the final game it just fades to a black screen and you wake up the next morning but the code for it was still in the game and when it, it was eventually released on PC People found it and put it back into the game, and it was a whole big controversy. the 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 U.S. government got involved. It was it was all awful. Video games were going to corrupt the youth and turn us all into sex craze maniacs. Um, and it cost Take Two and Rockstar twenty million dollars to settle uh, court cases, class action lawsuits, and uh, congressional hearings about the whole thing. It was a very it was a big mess. The game got pulled and was rated adults only, and then got pulled again and was re-rated to M when they finally removed all the code. Um, it was fun. It was a good time. It was a good time to be alive. That's why 2004 <laughs> was the best year in gaming. Uh, but now the newly released San Andreas remaster appears to at least contain the code associated with the hot coffee content, according to Vadium M. Uh, it's unlikely that players will be able to reactivate the sex mini game due to the fact that most of the actual assets needed for the game are still missing from these versions. As for why the code is even in these new newly released ports, the best theory is that the devs behind the collection were given the master build of San Andreas, just didn't remove anything from it. So all of Rockstar's comments, changes, uh, and code from the most recent build should be present within uh, the GTA Trilogy Definitive Editions files. It, it should also be noted that uh, the game runs like absolute dog shit. And, yes. and I heard that it's better on PlayStation 5 because the PlayStation 5 is better hardware, so it should run better. Yeah. Um, however, our friend Greg has it on PlayStation 5 and he is counting the crashes. It has crashed eight times <laughs> on him so far. Wow. Uh, so it's not a good port at all. Um, no, and it, it's it, it very sup yeah. supposedly it is worse on on Nintendo Switch. Uh, yeah. I think it I think it has a a point one Metacritic score or something or it user is score maybe lowest the lowest rated user score on Switch. User score, okay. Yeah. Uh, I also want to point this out. I saw this on Reddit. And I thought it was funny. Uh, increasing poly count doesn't always make sense. This is uh, Tough Nut Donuts, and it's a donut that's low poly because, you know, it's a PlayStation 2 game. Uh, right. And then next to it is a nut, which is, which is you know, sharp because it, it yeah. looks, it kind of, the donut kind of looks like a nut. So it's like yeah. Tough Nut Donuts. And then they, in the remastered version, they smoothed out the donut and also smoothed out the nut. <laughs> So it's not a nut. It's a it's a it's a washer. It, it's a washer now. They just hit auto smooth on everything. It turns out. I don't know that that game like the remaster we talked about it on the show. It already had like a weird like art design because everything yeah. was still very blocky, but they had like more realistic textures to it. Oh, it was very and I strange. forgot we played the trailer and got a DMCA. Oh yes, because <laughs> we played the the video of the trailer. Yeah. Dog shit so. game anyway. <laughs> yeah. 
It's disappointing because I would have totally bought it, but now I don't know so much. <laughs> and it's it's like it's especially bad because these are you know twenty year old games. They should play fine on modern systems. Yeah. Uh, Squid Vorbis in the chat says, "Well, it is no nut November." <laughs> <laughs> He got you. Yep. Uh, so yeah, that is really disappointing. I, Rockstar usually does a really good job with stuff like that, but apparently yeah. they gave it to like a mobile game studio, and that's why they gave, it to, they gave it to the people who did the mobile ports of these games like a couple of years ago. That they they should have done a much better job. Yeah. I, I I wonder what 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 went wrong. And I think what's funny is that you know the funniest thing about it is is that they're calling this the definitive edition of these games <laughs> and they pulled they pulled the original versions of these games off of digital storefronts so if you want uh san andreas vice city or gta3 this is what you get that's it that's their way of driving sales to the new hotness yeah uh they uh, i don't know they, they 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 messed this up big time uh and apparently the the like the like CEO of Take Two was like shitting on Cyberpunk for for rushing the game out. Yeah, and now, this is this year's Cyberpunk. Yeah. Honestly, uh, next we have uh, the Nintendo Switch is back on top of the U.S. after OLED launch. Let's go! Yeah, uh, last month PS5 ended the Switch's nearly three year long reign as the best selling console in the U.S. Proved to be short-lived, however, in October, thanks in large part to the new OLED model of the Switch, uh, Nintendo is back on top. According to Nintendo, the Switch has sold 711,000 units overall in October, uh, and, thir- and 314,000 of those were the OLED version. NPD Group says that these numbers made the Switch the, the U.S.'s best-selling console that month in both units and dollars. The analyst firm also says the PS5 remains the top seller in 2021 in terms of dollars, while the Switch is on top when it comes to units sold. Uh, I, I knew that this was going to be the case, that the PlayStation 5 yeah. was... was uh, like The PlayStation 5 sold a lot, but so did the Switch. Just because the PlayStation yeah. 5 like overtook the Switch doesn't mean that they both weren't selling really good. Right. Uh, if we see this as a strong start for the Switch OLED model and a very strong indicator of the performance we can expect as we go into the holiday season, uh, Nintendo of America President Doug Bowser tells The Verge. Uh... F- trying to let's just skip around to like bowser knows that those are yeah uh bowser says that he doesn't predict those supply issues changing anytime soon uh the supply issues that are you know taking uh, taking hold of all electronics these challenges have been facing many industries and they've been going on for quite some time but we're working to meet demand for our holiday products including the switch oled model i will say things are constantly changing but we've been working across the supply chain from production to overseas transport to local distribution channels to make sure we have a steady flow of hardware and games through the holiday cycle now despite all of our efforts i'd say there's still a very high level of uncertainty i certainly i'd certainly recommend if you see it buy it this holiday season uh all right, so that's good news. Uh, the Switch yeah. is still on top. I'd imagine that uh, you know the, the the PlayStation Five and Xbox are going to sell great this holiday season, also. Yeah. Uh, also, Bowser also touched upon a few other recent and ongoing Nintendo storylines, including fan complaints about poor emulation for N sixty four games on Switch <laughs> Online. According to Bowser, we're constantly looking for ways to make our online features and those games better, and continuing to add value through more services and more games as we go th- as we go forward. We take the feedback very seriously and we're continuing to look at ways to improve the overall performance. For us, it's about quality and great content at a great value. Uh, we we heard that before. I think we've said that on the podcast before. Did we? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think we, we, we knew that they said that about the, the, the ports, but they don't really care. <laughs> uh, and he also touched on Joy-Con Drift. As we've gone through the first five and a half years of Switch... Uh, we've observed gameplay. We've observed as people have returned units that they've uh, worn, and we've been ta- making continuous improvements overall to the Joy-Con, including the analog stick. The latest version, Switch OLED, has the same updated analog stick that's now available on the original Switch and Switch Lite. So he's just repeating like what other people in Nintendo have said. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, that I remember. Last thing to talk about real quick, Sakurai got an Xbox. <laughs> You love to That's see it. it. The console wars are over. 
are over. The console wars are over. Uh, Sakurai has jump shipped. <laughs> Him and his cat now have a brand new Xbox Series X. Yeah. Sakurai's tweet says uh, through Google Translate, one year after its release, I finally bought it. It may be affected by the Corona wreck, but it will continue to be difficult to obtain uh, a game consoles. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he, he, he finally got one. Yay. I wonder what he's going to yep. play. Probably Banjo-Kazooie. <laughs> Probably Halo, honestly. Yeah. Like, why I else remember, would, he, like, would he get it now? When they announced uh, Banjo Kazooie on for Smash, he just said Banjo Kazooie are current are currently only available to be played on the Xbox console. So play it there. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice of him to promote another yeah. console. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that's all the news. We, we made it. Did it. Good job, everybody. Now I do happen to have a. <laughs> I just realized you couldn't hear that. <laughs> yeah. I know. Um, here we go. This is uh, this is by uh, Kyle Gatto. It says, uh, "British people be like Halo, isn't it?" <laughs> but it's in the Halo Infinite font. Yeah. You get it? It's the Halo logo. <laughs> but That's <it's>... funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, wait, we got some notifications though that I forgot to read through. Uh, uh, Jake Cannon says, "I stepped away." Did you see the Spider-Man trailer drop during the podcast? We talked about it in the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we were joking about the whole about time. It. Yeah. Uh, Jaron Church with another four hundred bits. Thank you very much. And J uh, C J Gabriel with nine months in a row, almost one year chilling in the den. Oh, eleven months total. Ooh. Thank you very much, good sir. It was probably been eleven. It's probably been a year chilling in the den. Yeah. Anyway, uh, no will wolf rice cauliflower tweet. All right, no, I forgot about that one. That was pretty good. That was pretty. <laughs> that good. was. We gotta we gotta pull that up. Uh, that was, is that actually is that the first fan art of the wolf den? No, no, it's we've not. had, but that we've had fan art before. But this is the I, first. I think this is the first fan art of a goof. Yeah, of of a podcast topic. I think it might be. Yeah. Z J Rosenberg. I feel like we passed this opportunity too quickly, and it's you as the green giant. And it's funny because that was the brand of cauliflower rice I tried first. <laughs> of course, it was. All right, we're going to talk to you people real quick, and then we got to leave. Yes. This is the part of the show where we talk to you. If you'll have to comment on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Podcast. Oh, uh, I want to bring this up. Squid Vorbis says, have you seen the Streamlabs drama going on? Uh, I have. Let me explain this to Will. Uh, yes, so Streamlabs is what we use to uh, to show notifications on, yeah. our, on our stream. Mm -hmm. Um let me see if I can find it. Uh, basically, they stole a whole thing from another company, like the whole thing. Really? Uh, cool so there's a company boy. called Lightstream that I think is basically Streamlabs, uh -huh. but it does everything through the cloud. So like, uh, got it. It's like you know how we use OBS to stream, and we use yeah. Streamlabs for alerts. There's a yeah. there's something called Streamlabs OBS that just merges the two together. Got it. And then I think Lightstream is that, but through the cloud. So, so you stream everything over the, like straight from the cloud. You don't render it on your computer or, or something like right. that. Okay. Uh oh, you do it in your browser. Okay. So, Streamlabs came out with something, basically the same thing, uh -huh. which is fine. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. Competition's good, except that their pitch deck for what it is on their website was an exact copy and paste of what live light stream was. Yeah. Um, and it's like almost word for word. Yeah. And it's, and then they, they responded like Streamlabs responded and they said, we made a mistake. Text on the landing page was a placeholder text that went into production by error. This was our fault. We removed it and blah, blah, blah. We're very sorry. Yeah. 
But like, so you, you, I mean, you were trying to rip them off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is a thing that tech companies do. It's just, oh yeah. They just see another company doing something and they say, we need to do that. And then they just literally in the pitch deck, in the internal meetings, they have the other company's stuff and they're like, we need to do this. How do we do this? And that's, yeah. they got caught basically doing that. There's also this. Oh, there's another one. OBS. Uh, okay, this is a quote tweet. The team at Streamlabs should be ashamed, not satisfied enough to ride OBS projects hard work. Now that's, I forgot, OBS is uh, open source. So when right. Streamlabs made Streamlabs OBS, they didn't pay for that. Um, oh. Now to copy hours down to the layout and every word on our marketing site and our UX in this uh, product. And then OBS quote tweeted it and said, near the launch of Slobs, Streamlabs OBS, Streamlabs reached out to us about using the OBS name. We kindly asked them not to. They did so anyway and followed up by filing a trademark. <laughs> We've tried to sort this out in private and they have been uncooperative at every turn. Uh, I'm going to like that because I only use Streamlabs. I don't use Slobs. We're right. off it, but I do use Streamlabs for alerts. We're often faced with confused users and even companies who do not understand the difference between the two apps. Support volunteers are sometimes met with angry users demanding refunds. We've had interactions with several companies who did not realize our apps were separate. Legally, they have delay they have obeyed the terms of the GPL, but they have repeatedly disregarded the spirit of open source and of giving back. Despite those actions by Streamlabs, the OBS project will continue to provide free open source and tools for everybody. Uh, we will continue to support our users, the community, and our amazing developers for their hard work. Sucks. Well, okay. <laughs> Bunch of pieces of shit. Yeah. But I'm in too deep now. I can't use something else. I know. What, what, are you gonna, what are you going to do? I have to convert to some other friggin' alert thing. Yeah. And, and I've had other... I've had other alert companies reach out to me to switch to them uh and i was like no i can't i can't do that mm -hmm. i guess now i should look into it anyway oh we got to read last week's wolf den live real quick yeah um last week's wolf den live over on the youtube the comments eric says thank yep. you i'm so glad someone agrees with my opinion on god of war it's a glorified 4k hack and slash and my game of the year is ratchet and clank well, there you go uh, Sean Diggs says God of War 2018 is the best game of its generation anyone who thinks <laughs> it's just bottom mashing did not understand the combat Metroid Dread will never have the historical significance or critical acclaim of that game historical yeah, significance I didn't... <laughs> uh, I didn't understand the combat because you're trying to you're trying to affix melee combat to a third person shooter style of, mecha of mechanism maybe you know, that's that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Maybe Sean Diggs didn't understand the combat in Metroid Dread. You ever think about that? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Tucker says, just picked up Leap version 2 chair in baby blue color. What? It's going to look so nice with my giant wolf den mouse pad. There you go. What is Leap version 2 chair? I don't know. Also, I measured uh, a wolf den mouse pad will not fit my desk. <laughs> well, you're getting one anyway. All right. Maybe I'll bring it to work. Bring it to work. There you go. Uh, Boston Boy 72 says, tune in next week at Wolf Den Podcast, where we will continue to ask and not find the answer to the question 3D side scroller or nah. <laughs> not, we're not bringing back old shit. <laughs> that is, uh, that uh, we got to have that like in case of emergency break class where we just <laughs> get that if we need to like just fill time. We have that. In case of emergency break glass, it is the stop streaming button. <laughs> <laughs> Arash Nabavi says, have the two of you seen No Time to Die by any chance? Just wanted to know your thoughts on it. Keep up the great work. I did not. Uh, I haven't, but I did get it recently from a bay of mine who happens to be a pirate. Um, <laughs> I, I want to see I want to see it because I do love the series. Um, but I'm here. I'm hearing very mixed things about it. My friends seem to like it, but I'm seeing other places say like it's not a good. 
it's not a good send off for Daniel Craig. So I, I've heard phenomenal things about it. Yeah, everybody, everybody I saw, everything I saw about it was 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 praise. Yeah, so we'll see. It's also like almost three hours long, mm-hmm. and I feel like Bechter like really did not do this movie any favors because that movie like basically shot this movie in the knee and told them deal with it. Oh, like uh, like uh, episode uh, eight. Fuck you, uh, <laughs> Lou the Lunatic. <laughs> Lunalistic says, hey, guys, your reaction to my mole bite comment was freaking hilarious. I forgot about this. Just to clarify where I was, I was at my shop that I rented the building for. I wasn't out in the woods looking for trouble, LOL. I've been having a squirrel problem for months in my attic, so we hired some moles. And that was finally dealt with. Now I have a new problem with moles in my store. I've caught three so far, and the first one bit me through my glove, which is the one that gave me the rabies scare. Since then, I've gotten thicker gloves in case I need them. Anyways, Metroid Dread is my game of the year. Great episode. <laughs> Lou the Lunatic, Do you is your store in a hole in the ground is what I need yeah. to know. <laughs> also, have you tried a, a big dog? <laughs> Is get a, a get a shop job? dog, yeah, or or a bodega cat, yeah, because because th- that'll get rid of all, all your vermin, and also you'll have a cute little pet. Have I told this? There. Have I told this story on the podcast? So I was home what? alone at our parents' house when I lived at our parents' house. I, our parents were out somewhere, and every morning for like a week, I would hear just a just a bang on the oh, window, I- just over and over again. And I looked, and it was a bird that was just sitting on the fence and then flying into the window, just bashing yeah. into the window. So what I did was, after a few days of that happening, I printed out a picture of the mangiest-looking cat I could find, a Maine Coon, and I taped it to the window, and it's still there. It's been a few yeah. years, and the bird never came back. My so you need a scarecrow. Just point at it. <laughs> yeah, it's the cat. Yeah, yeah. You 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 need a scarecrow for your uh, for your for your shop, and it yeah. should just be a giant uh, Maine Coon. Anyway, uh, chat for two seconds, and then we're out. Uh, yeah. Br- Brian Sinsners with a long one. Hi, Bob. Hi, Will. Pardon me if you already talked about No Way Home, but in the one scene in the trailer, I don't want you know. What? I don't even want to know. We didn't. I want to see it for myself. I don't want to know. Yeah. Um, what else do we got? Uh, Monty Mole got him. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Uh, uh, highly eccentric says it's not good, but uh, it's good, but not a traditional Bond film. More just about Daniel Craig's Bond story arc. Okay. That was the thing about like Daniel Craig's Bond. They like tried to make him like they tried to give him like story arcs and whatnot. But like James Bond is always about like him doing his job <laughs> like that's it it's just him at right. work you don't need more than that uh somebody in the chat i missed it said can we stop with three hour movies already uh i oh silent mongoose honestly yes give me 10 minute movies <laughs> there's a youtube channel i've been getting suggested because i saw one yeah. video it they literally just give you the synopsis of the whole movie they just talk you uh, through the movie in like 10 minutes and it's kind of awesome. <laughs> but it's all like weird, obscure movies you would never want to sit through. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh, uh, or nice thoughts. Uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. As, uh, what do you think about the rumor Metroid Prime remake is already finished according to industry leaker Emily Rogers? Did you hear about this? No. You know how like every every like few months there's like a uh, Metroid Prime trilogy is coming to the Switch for real mm-hmm. this time. Mm-hmm. Now apparently it was revealed there's a leak that Metroid Prime One is done and it's ready to go on Switch in any moment. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that I for believe, sure. I believe it, but I'll believe it more when it actually happens because like I've... we've been hearing this for a while. I I think it makes a lot of sense that they would hold that for closer to when Prime Four is wanting to be released because they want right. to they want to drum up a pie for Prime Four so they they probably have some yeah. weird marketing reason why they want to hold it. Yeah, 
They held freaking Breath of the Wild. 2017 Game of the Year Breath of the Wild. They held that for True. at least a year just for to have Switch it come point. out with the yeah. Switch. Yeah. Um. Anyway, what else do we have here? Uh, what are you getting? You, what are you getting? You, your girlfriend for Christmas, Bob. What am I getting my girlfriend for Christmas? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get myself a MacBook M1 Max, and I did. Fuck yous. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I can't say anything because uh, uh, they might be listening. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um Jaron Church, thank you for the hundred bits again. Uh organized thoughts, it'd be amazing if they dropped some of the 2D Metroids while while there's hype. Uh yeah. So oh, I so oh. I be, I beat Metroid Dread and then at the very end I got a splash screen for Metroid Zero Mission and I I didn't realize that was like the reward for beating the game was just art. Which is like the Metroid mm-hmm. Zero Mission art. Yeah, I thought I was gonna get to play all of Zero Mission. That would have been cool. I was like, "Holy shit!" They should they because right now the only Metroid games you can play on Switch are the original Super Metroid and Dread, and there's like a whole lot more that you currently cannot play. We really need to get Fusion in a playable form factor right now because uh, yeah. I would love to replay Fusion like that. I think I have it. I think, like, I physically have it. So, if you want it, I'll give it to you. <laughs> Fusion? Mm-hmm. I have it. Oh, you have it? Yeah, unless we have two. Uh, I definitely no, have we it. we only have one. Wait, no, I don't. I don't have it. I have, Med- I have Mega Man Zero. I'm stupid. I don't have it. You have it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's right there. Oh, my God, you have a lot. Yeah, I got... You know, because I, I, we needed a better way to organize Game Boy games, so just do what they do at conventions: get the baseball card sleeves. True. I don't have that much. What are those? What are those cards you have? So the McFarlane DC figures all come with cards, and I need a place to put the cards. Oh, okay. And what I used to like about them was they would come with artwork based on the comic they're from or the movie they're from. Now. Uh, I only have one, but now it's just a picture of the figure itself, and I hate that. I know that what sucks. I what I just bought. Give me the art. Give me a picture of Batman Beyond from the show, not the Batman Beyond toy I'm currently holding in my hand. Hmm. Um. Oh, I'm uh, Rocket Val is reminding me. Uh. So that's the end of the show, but I have some things to talk about. So that's that's who announced. Okay. So uh, thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Uh, there are three things I would like to talk about right now. First things first, on Friday, fan meetup. Oh! 11 a.m. That's right. I'm getting up before noon. <laughs> it's not my decision. Wood is coming to New York, and he needs to oh, let everybody boy. know he's coming to New York. <laughs> <laughs> so so at Nintendo New York City uh with with the launch of uh Pokemon uh Diamond and Pearl uh the remix uh Wood will be there getting his and I will be there just hanging out probably touching him on his hips like this. So uh you can come see us outside of the Nintendo store not in the Nintendo store. Don't go into the Nintendo store to look for us. We will be outside of the Nintendo store at 11 a.m. for about an hour just hanging out talking to you. It'll probably be cold. Bring a jacket. Um, second thing I wanted to talk about, I released a video on my personal channel. Here it is. It's about my MacBook setup. I'm very proud of it. I have a really nice setup. I think it's really cool. I think it's pretty interesting to hear about it. Uh, also slap a like on the video. Third thing I want to talk about 
Look at this mouse pad. How cool is this mouse pad? Oh. It's so cool. And you can get yourself one over at wolfdenapparel.com. Bam, baby. Get yourself a mouse pad today. Anyway, thanks for being here. Uh, very slim chance I'll stream tomorrow, but wouldn't it be fun if I did? Uh, <laughs> I'm definitely going to try to stream uh, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl on Thursday. Although Wood's going to be here and we got to film a bunch of stuff. So uh, I'm still hoping to stream, though, I because I, I want to be able to get at that. Um, who do we want to raid today? Ooh. Who is on right now? You know what? I've never raided this person before. Everybody say hi to my friend, Abe. He's been helping out with the studio a lot. He's been helping, uh, he's been helping out, uh, with things around the studio for E and myself. So, uh, mostly E, but I mean, it's what's, it's also for me. Everybody go say hi to Abe. Uh, just go over there and say hello. He's playing, uh, Halo right now. And I will see you hopefully, uh, maybe tomorrow. Hopefully, definitely Thursday. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.